Hey everybody, Mark Davis in the immediate aftermath of our Thursday, May 23rd, 2013 show. You know, I kind of knew how this week was going to go. I mean, lots of hearings, lots of this, lots of that, but there are some things that I did not expect. I didn't expect a British soldier to be beheaded on a street in South London. Um, I'm going to use that as an entry point to something that's kind of a broader concept here for today's video blog experience. I've always believed that you can judge someone by what they love, what they are drawn to, what they are attracted to. I think you can also judge people by what they are repelled by, what uh, bugs them, what they oppose. It's really sort of uh, different sides of the same coin. So with that, let's go to the Obama administration and see what really, really gets their goat. Uh, there's a glib tweet you could probably ram into 140 characters that says something like, when this president is as upset by al-Qaeda, when he is as opposed to jihad as he is to conservative Tea Party groups, then we'll truly be safe. Now, that is a little bit of an oversimplification. However, that doesn't mean that it is without merit. Uh, this is a presidency with two big problems right now. One of them is the hostility they've shown uh, toward people who oppose them. They are to be derided. They are to be ruined. They are to be condemned. And listen, I know that's politics. I mean, they say politics ain't beanbag, and that's true. But this goes to a, to a whole other level. Republicans and Democrats have always had snarky things to say to each other, and they always will. And, and I'll be a part of that, uh, gladly so. But there'll be a, a, a kind of an appreciation for a civility around a, a sort of set of rules governing such things, rules that have been dashed against the rocks of late. So here's what's really tricky with the IRS deal. And that is that while the White House knew, somebody in the White House knew, that Tea Party groups, conservative groups, constitutionalist groups were being targeted for extra negative attention by the IRS, there was the president out on a campaign trail identifying these groups, not just as enemies of his campaign, but enemies of America. That level of distaste, that level of cavalier disregard uh, for the, the protections offered those who politically disagree with you, that's just a huge problem. Now, flip the coin and let's find something that he is not sufficiently repelled by. Radical Islam. Take a, uh, take a look at, at, at Great Britain, this horrible video that you may have already seen. There's this blood-soaked guy with a machete still in his hands uh, talking to a guy holding a camera. How'd you like to be the guy holding the camera as the blood-soaked guy wielding the machete comes to you to offer some comments after the murder that he's just committed on the streets of South London. And there's this guy uh, talking about how, gee, I'm sorry that women had to see this. Apparently it's fine if men see it. I'm sorry that women had to see this, but in our land, apparently the guy's from Nigeria, in, in our land, women see this all the time. Okay, wow, sorry to hear about that. Uh, does this make it okay for you to essentially behead someone in public in South London? No, it doesn't, but here's my point. Uh, it took about five minutes for British Prime Minister David Cameron, who is no conservative, to identify this as what? Terrorism. That's right. Meanwhile, at Fort Hood, Nidal Hassan awaits trial one of these years, one presumes, for something that our administration characterized as workplace violence. This country is, is under attack. Every, not, not a 9-11 style attack, not even a Boston Marathon style attack every day, but it's under a continuing attack, subtle and not so subtle, by those who seek a caliphate, those who seek Islamic rule throughout the land. And that's not the majority of our Muslim brothers and sisters, I know that, but it doesn't take many. Uh, it is, a, I'm afraid, a shockingly high percentage of people who are going about this in America and certainly in Europe. A lot of people said, yo, Mark, take a look at London, take a look at Paris, a lot of it where there's been massive Islamic immigration. And when you get a big wave of Islamic immigration, you're going to get two things. The most prevalent thing you'll get is a bunch of Muslims who are peace-loving and law-abiding, and the only difference between you and them might be where you go to church, the way it ought to be. But you're also going to get a certain percentage, and I don't know what that percentage is, but it's more than we might really be comfortable with, of jihadists, of Islamists, of people who will kill you where you stand in order to make a point and spread the reign of terror. So there's a lot to learn from the London example. And listen, there's a lot of debate in America whether we need to shut down all Islamic immigration. 
I don't know. Uh, I mean, I wish there was some magic glow given off by the people from the Muslim world who were at some point going to try to start an Al-Qaeda cell, but there's not. So that debate rages against the larger backdrop, of course, of immigration reform in general. But to return to my, my original point, when you have a White House that is so dismissive of and upset by conservative opposition that they will lie and break the law to victimize it, and yet by the same token, you have an administration that is not nearly repelled enough, not nearly alerted, and not nearly on guard enough against a real threat to our country every day, the threat of global jihad, you got a problem, a big problem. So we uh, track and chronicle these problems, at least as I see them. You may weigh in with how you see them. Perhaps it's differently. That's why we have phone lines. And we're glad to hear from you. If you're watching this on Thursday, the day that I'm doing this, woohoo! here comes Friday. Big five hours of radio, 5 to 8 a.m. Central Time on Bill Bennett's Morning in America. You can listen to everything we do live right here at 660 a.m. The whatever time zone you're in, but it's 5 to 8 Central on Fridays and then 8 to 10 locally. Normal show time Monday through Thursday is 7 to 10 Central. So come hang out with us. We got a lot on our minds. I know you have a lot on your mind. So let's all put it together. Mark Davis Show. Thanks for watching and for listening here at 6.60 a.m. The Answer.